Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript. And today we're going to be discussing the form object, uh, the form methods and properties and whatnot, and form validation to check to make sure the user typed in what you want. So I already recorded this before and I realized it takes too long to create the forms on screen and explaining it all at the same time. So I already have the form pre-made and make sure it's within your body tags but not within your script tags. Okay, so I created a form. I gave it a generic name called my form. Uh, the method is post, which means it'll send it somewhere. And where it's going to send it is in the action, which is an email, which we really don't need to worry about for now. Then all this is just text that appears inside the form. Next to each of these, I just create an input value, an input element. Uh, the name of the email is, is just generic text for the type. Uh, the, uh, all the names correspond with one another, so name is name, password is password, email is email, and I just incremented up one for each of the IDs, just to make it simple. And the password here, that makes it bullet points that pop up as you type, or whatever you call them, so you can't see the letters. So no one you know, that's looking over your shoulder can see what you're typing in. Uh, simple paragraph tag, this is why you're here. I couldn't come up with good explanations, I'm too lazy and all three of them are checkboxes. If you use radio buttons or checkboxes, as you might have remembered, you just use the same name for each one of them. And again, they have a, their own uh, ID. Then you have a submit button, so for the type you just type in submit, not button, just submit, and it will execute this up here. And the name, I just gave it, called it submit, but it's lowercase. The value is the text that appears on the button, which is just submit. And you know what, I'll change it to done, why not? just to give it so there's a little differentiation there and the ID is 7 so that's about it so if I show you the form here it is I refresh the page now it says done uh, and that's about it so uh, and a lot less a lot less time less than half the time so I'm happy so in order to access this like we did with the images for an example this is all part of the document object model so we'll be referring to the forms the same way we did with images so I'm just going to create a variable here uh, just to make it easier to print the information. And just like before with the images, we type in document first since it's part of the document object. Dot, then instead of images, we type in forms. And it's always plural, so there's always an S at the end. Then within the brackets, you type in whichever form you want to refer to. So the first form, so they're created, the, um, these indices, these uh, arrays are... Um, these elements are added into the arrays every time you create images or forms. So this form will automatically be your first one, so it's zero. Then I'll just show you one property. You can look up the properties yourself on uh, Google. Uh, there's, there's quite a few, and I'm not going to go through all of them. So I'll just show you the length property. And what that does is it returns how many elements are, are in here. Well, we can easily tell how many there are because I just I used simple IDs here that went all the way to seven so seven should be what pops up so I'll create an alert box I'll put X in there and we should get a nice seven and we do so that's cool you can also refer to the individual elements the input whatnot so you call them uh, inside the forms so uh, after form after specifying which form you want to uh, access type in elements, again it's plural, followed by brackets, then a dot, and whichever element you want to access starting with zero. So since we have seven elements, you can only type in zero through six. So, I don't know, I'll type in three. And let's return the name this time. Let's use a different property. So it will uh, return whatever name you have. So let's see what we get. So we get reason pops up because we have one, two, or so we have zero, one, two, three. So three returns the fourth element, which is called reason. So if I type in two, that should refer the third one, which comes back as email, and there it is. So that's cool. So that's about it for uh, fig figuring out how to access your forms and the elements within them. Except for this, actually. I, I should show this. You don't have to do, do it this way. This is actually a bit complicated. An easier way is just to use the names that you gave them. So I could just type in my form right here. And then 
you can uh, type in the element name. So for password, for example, I'll just uh, the name for the password is just password. Now this is kind of uh, redundant because since this is the name, this is what's going to be returned when you use the name property. But just to show you it works, see now it says password. So you can use it this way, and this is how I usually use it, and I assume it's how programmers usually use it. I mean, it'd make more sense. It's more easy. Unless you're dealing with elements that keep getting added on uh, through loops or whatever. I mean, unless you're doing that, then you can just do it this way. You don't have to worry about additional uh, elements in an array. So anyways, um, let's move on to form validation. So what if some uh, somebody tries to submit the form uh, without typing in a name or a password or an email? You want to stop them, right? So let's figure out how to do that. So I'll create a function called validation. And uh, and yeah, now we're going to have to create an event handler inside the form tag, and it's going to be called the on submit. I'm not quite sure if I showed this one in my event handler tutorial, but this is this, this does not go inside your submit button. You can create an on click event, but it won't work the same way as we're going to want it here, and, and you'll see in a moment. And in the on submit you want to type in return first and then the name of the function and the reason for this is because uh, when it's checking to see if there's a value within certain text fields we're going to be returning either true or false so this value right here will be either true or false if it's false then we're going to want to return false to the form which will then tell it not to do this stuff right here not to do the not to do the submit and all this. You could just have the function name here without the return in front of it, but what will happen is it will execute this stuff, but whether it returns true or false, the on submit will be equal to true or false, not return true or false. So it will still execute the code within the function, but it will still also execute your Outlook, Microsoft Outlook or whatever, to do this as well. So. Um, you need to have the return in front of the function in order for this to work properly, in order to keep it from submitting. Otherwise, the validation process is pointless. So, let's create a, a simple if statement. So, if... And then within this, let's do uh, document dot... and then my form dot and let's make sure they typed in a, a name so for the name one I'll type in name so this is not a property I'm not um, if this by itself is actually going to refer to the name of your form but if I go on past that then it will know I'm talking about the element name not the form name so just a little side note then a new property other than the name is the value and what this does is it looks for the value that the user typed in in the text field so we're going to want to check to see if, if it's an empty string or we're going to want to check to see if it's null. Pretty much the same thing, but it doesn't hurt to have both of these being checked. So I'll throw in null right there. And then we're going to need parentheses that go around everything here. So you got parentheses that go around the whole thing. So it's going to check if either one of these is true and if it's true it's going to create an alert box that says or, uh, please give us your name and then it's going to have to stop executing this function so you're going to have to return false what this does is it'll stop execution of this function and just automatically make this validation equal to false so then it'll say return false up here and then it'll never submit for you. Then we're also going to have to create an else. And we'll have it create an alert that says, thanks for the input, and return true. So let's see if this works. Hopefully it'll work. So I'll refresh the page, and if I don't put anything in my name, it says, please give us your name, and Outlook or whatever does not pop up. Let me actually get rid of this return right here to show you what happens if not. 
So I'll refresh the page, and it still does this, but then my little Outlook or whatever thing pops up still. So you need to make sure you have your return right there. And if I do put in a name, Adam, then it says, thanks for the input, and then it launches it. So that's good. Uh, so you can also do that for password and email and whatnot. Uh, sorry, I've been making tutorials like all night, so I got hungry, my toast was ready, and I could smell it. Okay, so now I'm back. So uh, what, what were we doing? Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we wanted to check the checkboxes. So I'm going to actually do something really redundant, and what it is is it's going to actually kind of make you, force you to check a certain box, but whatever. So I'm going to create a variable, and I'll just call it... Uh, I'll just call it check one and I'll just call it that because it's the first checkbox in the list and I'll set that equal to and in document now there's actually a different way you can access these elements without having to type in my forms dot then whatever whatever element number or forms bracket zero bracket end bracket whatever instead you can just type in document dot and then get element, so elements capitalized, by, by is capitalized, and ID is capitalized. But notice that only the I and ID is capitalized, the D is not. And then within that, you type in whichever ID right here you want to refer to. So the, um, the I don't know, the first checkbox is ID 4. So I'll just type in a 4 here. Now let's create an else if, shall we? And here you can just type in the check one. And something you could do is like you could type in dot value to see if it's empty, like we did uh, with uh, with this one right here. You can also type in dot checked, and it will see if it's checked or not. So it will check to see if it's false or not, meaning not checked. And what it'll do, what we'll have it do, is type in. So if you're not checking, I don't know. Then we'll have it say, so you do know? I don't know, I'm coming up with just random stuff right now because it's late and all. I got to get to bed. And then we'll have it return false so it stops executing. You know really, I should actually you know what, I'll change it in just a moment. But I'll refresh the page so Adam is still there but I'm not checking that I don't know. So now it says so you do know and the application never pops up. But you know what, I can just get rid of this and it will still show this to me but it will still activate the application so so you do know and this still pops up so you know what that actually that actually would make more sense than to keep the use than having to force the user to type it in and yeah that's simple form validation you can use this for the radio buttons too you can uh, use this for your password and, and whatnot and I think I'll have a project video on how to determine if your user typed in email or not by searching for the at symbol I think that would make a perfect so, I'm, so it would be a full form and it would be, I think that would be a perfect project video so uh, until then I'll see you in the next tutorial